Hi, and welcome back to History of Saps, Blackjacks, and Slungshots. This one here is neither a blackjack sap or slungshot, technically. It is a South American bola, B-O-L-A. And a bola is basically South America's most unique contribution to kind of weapons development and history. Now, this is a flexible, weighted impact weapon. It does have kind of a covering over the dense core, which provides the impact. So, you can see how it is related, but this is definitely its own animal, for sure. Originally, this was a hunting implement, and I think always throughout its history, primarily one. But you could certainly use it as a weapon, and it was used that way. Uh, this, the three balls that you're seeing here are all heavy. You'll notice that two, the, one, the two on the right, are much larger. Those are the primary weapon, if you will. Everything else is really a delivery system. It's good to cover this one right after the Native American Slungshot War Club, because this is another indigenous American, you know, traditional weapon that's sap-like. It's similar in a lot of ways, like we talked about. Also the fact that it's kind of woven and stitched together. But it's really something completely different. Whereas the War Club was, of course, a weapon of war, this is a hunting tool. That's what it was developed for a very long time ago, in fact. Uh, we'll cover that in a second. But that's what we're looking at here is a hunting tool. But, you know, a lot of weapons were hunting tools originally. A spear, right, bow and arrow, all kinds of things. Now, this may seem like the strangest hunting implement you've ever seen. It definitely might be because it's just so strange. Here, look, you can see some detail here, right? See the connection there, the metal ring... You can see how this is woven together. It's very sturdy. This one's pretty old. Looks like it was used plenty. And you can just see where it... You, know, you saw a rip there, right? On the ball itself. Here's the smaller one. And it just looks extremely well-worn. These would have been carried out on the plains in South America. And as I said, used to hunt. So how do you hunt with something like this? Uh, you notice when it was all together, there's... Three balls, that's the typical configuration, but not the only one, but this is really the classic bola, is you've got three, one is smaller than the other two, the two larger ones are the main, you know, weapons portion, like I said. The smaller one here, this is basically the handle, although it is going to do some damage as well. So you grab this whole contraption by the small one, the other two spin then kind of like helicopter blades, right? They're on opposite ends, and they spin in circles, build up a lot of momentum, you're grasping in the middle, essentially, by the connection at the small one, and then you launch the whole thing, and it very improbably flies through the air, ensnares your enemy and or prey, and on top of that, it knocks them around quite a bit, right? Because it's an impact weapon as well. So this is extremely unique. We've got a ensnaring impact distance weapon, and I can't think of one analogous type of weapon, you know, anywhere else in the world, really. Here's the connection that kind of puts it all together, and think basically of it like, kind of like a barbell shape, like a line with two dots or circles on the end. That's the main portion of the weapon, and then here in the middle, you can see where it's kind of a rotating sleeve. That's what connects the smaller ball to the whole thing, and it meets up in the middle, and that's why the other two kind of swing around it, basically. So, it's really amazing, the ingenuity behind this. I don't know who came up with this. You know, you can picture kind of a, there's all kinds of hunting implements that you can in, envision how they were conceived. Uh, somebody was really experimenting when they, when they came up with this one. So let's see if I can get you a different view here. And that someone, to be clear, would be a South American Indian, right? This is an actually, <clears throat> excuse me, ancient device. Uh, evidence takes it back thousands of years, which is really surprising to me, given how kind of semi-complicated it is. So you can see the grip there, right? The little one is called a maniha. Maniha is Spanish for handle, so it gives you an obvious idea of what the intention was. And as I was saying, this is a South American Indian device, but it's more famous now for the South American cowboys, the gauchos, using it. So these are descendants of the Spanish, you know, colonizers. And once they were there, they adopted this from the Indians. Now you can take a look at this and see this thing's incredibly long. If I held it, you know, with my hand out, straight out... Uh, the other end would touch the floor easily, like it would just lay there in a pool, kind of at the bottom part of it. So you can find some cool pictures online of people swinging these, and when they're fully extended, it'll really surprise you how much range they have. That's one way to throw them. You know, there's, like I said, there was different configurations, and then there's different throwing methods as well. I won't go into detail by any stretch, but uh, it's really fascinating. There's also somebody talking, at least online, about the particular melee fighting style that would be used with these, that the, the Indians would use. So they kind of hold one ball in each hand, and it sounded very complicated. <laughs> Not sure how legitimate it was, but uh, 
bottom line is this was a melee and missile weapon. And I did find a European account talking about uh, Indians in the, it's called the Las Pampas region, using this absolutely in battle as a weapon. They would ride with a, a very long spear, it said 18 feet long, with super long lance as their primary weapon, and then have one of these, or some variation of it, ready for battle. As to how effective these were, they were used to bring down game and prey as big as 200 pounds. Uh, and they're also used to catch kind of fleeing cattle. So if a member of the herd breaks off, you might have a gaucho, a cowboy, chase him down and entangle his rear legs with one of these. Uh, they're also known to break bones. The loads could be different materials. This one here is probably stone. And as you can imagine, stone, it's about the size of your fist. You know, stone ball the size of your fist spinning around and traveling rapidly is certainly going to be able to break a bone once it makes contact. Speaking of the stone load, if you notice, you might wonder how this is put together. You know, you notice there's no stitching, like with a lot of the saps we've seen, but this is using a method that we will see with other types of saps. Basically, if you take wet leather, animal hide of any kind, whatever, and wrap it around something and let it dry, it's going to tighten. It's going to shrink and tighten. And that's the method of construction with this particular model here. So the leather casing has just kind of shrunk, wrapped itself around the stones, and that's why you get such a tight fit. So late in the 20th century, when we look at the Gonzales saps uh, way later on, very different kind of weapon, extremely different time and place, uh, the same method is actually used. Uh, one other thing I want to point out about these, uh, there's actually a lot, but uh, one other thing I'm definitely going to point out is that in Spanish, when you see this written about, it's usually called a boleadora. So it's a little bit more of a formal name to denote the actual weapon, because a bola is a ball in Spanish. That's one of the words for ball, so that's pretty obvious how I got that name, but boleadora gives it, you know, a more specific connotation. Another thing about the names is that there were various names <clears throat> for various configurations. So this kind of classic, you know, three you know, part model here could be called a Tres Marias, which is Three Marys in Spanish. I think that's a great name. Uh, so many things in Spanish go back to, uh, you know, Catholicism and that kind of thing. But I thought it was really interesting. Somebody mentioned that the Three Marys are the three stars in the belt of Orion. And that, I assume there's still a religious connection there, but uh, I thought that was really fascinating. I just ran across that uh, right before making the video. If you want to see what one of these looks like in flight, how it actually works, that's not difficult at all. Uh, it takes seconds to find some people experimenting on YouTube, uh, and you'll be surprised, I was, with the distance you can reach and the accuracy, and uh, it very efficiently wraps around its target once it does strike home. So that is about it for this very unusual type of slung shot. I, that's what I'm going to classify it as, but it really is its own weapon, has its own you know strain of DNA, it's not related to the other ones in this overall study, and I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks.